Hello, welcome to the Moraine Valley Judo Academy podcast. In today's episode, we're going to talk about confidence. Right? Judo can have either a positive or a negative impact on a person's confidence. Right? It all comes down to the club and the instructor and what the club is trying to achieve. I mean, not all clubs are trying to um, help people who are timid. It's just, you know, some clubs are interested in being known as a competitive club. So unless you're not a competitive athlete, you probably don't belong in that club. So that's a negative example because if you put a timid child, youth or adult into that situation, when it comes time to rendori, when it comes time to spar, they're gonna get they're gonna get worked. They're gonna get thrown a lot. They're going to be defeated a lot. They're gonna be pinned. They I mean Talk about an ego blow. I mean, judo is a very humbling martial art. Like, for someone to just hold you in place for 20 seconds, choke you, put you in an arm bar, or just throw you repeatedly onto the mat, like, that's rough. Especially if you're, like, brand new. So put a brand new person into a situation and they're playing against a skilled opponent who doesn't doesn't really take into consideration like the development of someone's confidence it's it's not going to be a good outcome and that new person will probably stop coming to judo and then they'll just look to find confidence somewhere else all right now let's talk about the positive scenario positive scenario is whether it's a competitive club or it's an academic club hobby club the um, the teachers, right? The coaches, whatnot. They're invested in the safety of their players. It's the first positive thing, right? The second thing is they identify what their students need to work on as individuals. And if it's confidence, then that sensei or the coaches are going to say, okay, we need to highlight all of the successes of this particular uh, judoka. Right, Judoka is a person who practices Judo. So um, when they learn how to fall, we need to celebrate that. When they are starting to become more physically fit, we need to celebrate that, right? When they throw someone properly, right, in a controlled environment, maybe it's just technique training or something, we make light of that. Right? Small successes, building, 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 building. And then eventually, you know, you come to Randori, pairing, pairing that person who, you know, has a frail ego with someone who is very humble just to begin with and working with those types of people, helping that person with low confidence along so they can feel more and more comfortable in Randori, in sparring training, right? To eventually that person who um, was a beginner is now kind of like an intermediate player and they are now in a position where they could confidently throw someone who is new who is a beginner and they'll be a good teacher because they will be able to associate with that person who is shy and timid and now the person who once was struggling with confidence is the person who was helping the shy and timid person along to develop their confidence. You know, there's a um, there's a judo club in my area that does a pretty good job with this. They have an inter-house tournament every eight or ten weeks. It's the Oaklawn Park District uh, Judo Club. And if you're not familiar with like how a judo tournament works, you know, we have fighting squares. And what the Oaklawn uh, Park District Judo Club will do is they'll just do one fighting square and they'll have like 70 kids or something like that who are going to be competing in this in-house tournament. What happens is if you're a new person, you kind of have like this chair that you sit in. It's like the on-deck chair, if you will. And you know that you're going to be next. You're going to be the next person that has to like go out. So you're like, you're waiting, you're watching, you're like, 
that's like the first like fear checkpoint. And they call your name. They're like, okay, it's your turn. You got to bow on the mat. Checkpoint number two, right? Palms are starting to get sweaty probably. And get to the side. You're facing your opponent. You bow onto the fighting square. And you get to your place to where you're getting ready to fight. You bow again. And it's about time to go. And the referee says, Hajime, which means begin. And then maybe if you're fighting against a skilled player. They get their grips on you. You shake your around a little bit, a little left, right, left, and throw you, and the game's over. Maybe the game lasted like 20 seconds, right? So if you, you know, have low confidence, and that confidence been steadily building through like the eight or 10 weeks, then you get humbled again, it comes back down, right? But you're, you're in an intimate environment. Yeah, just the parents are, are in the bleachers maybe, and all the kids that you know are there. And even better, if there are a few people that just like pat on the back, don't worry, it's going to be all good. Here are some things you could have done a little better, but don't, don't sweat it. All right, it's reassuring. But that is a defining moment in a judoka's judo path. Because from that tournament, they can either not sign up for the next session. It's a park district, so they work in sessions. Or if they felt support at the end, they sign up for the next session. And maybe the same thing happens in the next session and they take a couple of losses and they get eliminated. But what happens if in their third session, they've got, they've got 60 judo uh, classes underneath their bat belt, right? And they fight against somebody who's brand new and they end up winning. You know, the first time when you win a judo match is, I don't remember mine, it's a long time ago, but I'll tell you, you never stop wanting to chase that win. It's always, always looking forward to the next one. I, at least that's what it was for me. It, it, it's addictive. But going back to confidence and closing, the great thing about that is, is that person who has just won, they get off the mat and they go over to the person who's just lost. Maybe they're a little shy, maybe they're a little timid too. And they say, hey, you know what? It gets better. I was where you were two sessions ago. It was my first in-house tournament. And trust me, it gets better. And they sit together and they joke and they watch their, their friends compete or whatnot. But that's, that's how confidence gets built. You got you to gotta build up on each success. Find a little fail failure to come down. Build up on your successes some more. Find some failure. Come back down. And just keep going upward. I hope you've enjoyed this podcast. I hope it's helped. And as always, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me. I hope if you find value, uh, you'll consider subscribing to the channel and we'll, we'll see you on the mat.